Hey everyone, how's it going? And I just watched uh, SmackDown uh, tonight. Taped on Tuesday, I watched it tonight. Um, and wanted to talk about it a little bit. This was the, the Go Home SmackDown, the Go Home WWE show for uh, SummerSlam in two days. Um, and uh, yeah, this was pretty meh, honestly. I mean, without Punk on the show, Frankly, the, the product suffers a great deal these days. And in many instances, I was reminded of why I stopped watching. Um, but that having been said, we had a continuation of the Christian Orton title situation, um, which was actually, frankly, done pretty well. Um, Triple H came out at the beginning of the show to talk about what matches would be on the card. Uh, Christian came out and once again tried to use his legal savvy or whatever to um, get out of the mat. I think he was trying to get out of the no holds barred stipulation um, and did not. They they had a nice exchange. You know, Christian's really good at getting over as a heel, so um, you know, no problems here. Uh, Late and Triple H basically said, you know, man up and and have your match and stop bitching. Um, so Christian said that he would beat Randy Orton and he would beat whoever Triple H had lined up for him tonight. It turned out to be Sheamus. They had a, you know, a okay match I guess. Um, you know, it was fine for what it was. That ended with, uh, well, Christian tried to walk out of the match and lose by countout, and Sheamus grabbed him. And Christian was able to hit a move on him and then walk away and lose by countdown. So, um, there was that, you know, definitely doing the heel thing, which was totally fine. Um, and at one point they showed him, uh, with the title in the back, kind of like looking fairly morose and, you know, depressed. Um, and then, Uh, Orton had a promo before his match. Uh, the main event was Orton and the Great Kali, which was a match between Orton and the Great Kali. So, <laughs> you know, nothing at all to speak of. I thought it was pretty funny that the announcers were pushing how much of a threat Kali was because that man has not been relevant in quite some time. It was not too long ago that he was the Punjabi playboy and doing the kiss cam. So, um... Anyway, Orton won that match, obviously. And then Christian came out happy and said that he had some information and that now he was excited about the match. He couldn't wait because there are no rules and he's got the best thing going, he says. So, um, you know, I'm assuming that means he will um, have somebody maybe come out help him at SummerSlam or something. Definitely add a little bit of intrigue to that match. Um, you know, if Christian wins, it'll it'll almost definitely be by some kind of heel, you know, dastardly act. So, um, I was thinking during the matchup when it would be if Tonko came out uh, <laughs> on Christian's side, but that's probably not going to happen. It will be interesting to see what happens, though. I am interested to see that. Um... Other things on the show, you know, um, Cody Rhodes won the IC title, so that was pretty cool. Uh, the match wasn't great, it, but, you know, it was... Ezekiel Jackson is just kind of, you know, has done nothing really to impress me. Uh, although the, the thing where he basically threw, literally threw Cody across the ring, that was pretty cool. I, I, I popped a little bit for that. And then Cody won with the beautiful disaster, followed by the... Um, the Crossroads, which was excellent. I love the game in the title. Uh, they put the paper bag. <laughs> this whole Cody Rhodes gimmick thing is so great. I love how he has the, the people carrying the bags and passing them out to the audience. And, um, and they put one on Jackson's head, and then Jackson got up and destroyed Ted DiBiase, so, which Cody looked legitimately upset about. <laughs> um... Didn't go to help Ted, just kind of left with the look of fear upon his face. Um, so, you know, I get the feeling that's not over. But, you know, I, I'm definitely glad. You know, this is Cody's first single title. I think he deserves it. Uh, I think he's the right... Uh, 
if I was if I was running WWE for one night, and they said who would you put the Intercontinental Championship on right now, I would have said Cody Rhodes. So happy about that. Um, we had some other stuff. We had a Divas match, a Divas tag match with Beth and Natalia, the Divas of Doom, who have recently been uh, going around beating the crap out of the uh, Playboy Playmate divas as it were um or the you know the princesses or whatever you want to call them the the, the divas the, not the rest was the divas they came out and um had a tag match against aj and caitlin which was you know it was good to see aj and caitlin on tv i think i like i enjoy looking at both of them certainly and and uh i don't mind their matches you know this was really short so nothing really to speak of the uh, they all got in the ring which was nice but you know not very long um, and the Divas of Doom won pretty impressively, so that was cool, and, uh, Beth hit the glam slam on AJ to get the pin, and then, uh, Natalia put the sharpshooter on Caitlyn after the match, you know, but pushing their thing, which is cool, um, and man, it'd be nice if, if Kong or Parma or whatever you want, if she was around for this thing, I, you know, kind of, I almost can't help but wonder if they're, you know, prepping for her to come back at some point. I mean, because you'd be... How, how funny would it be if, if Beth and Natalia went on this huge tear against all the Divas and then Kong came in and beat the crap out of both of them or even joined up with them? That would be interesting, too. Probably not going to happen, but it's just something I was thinking about. Um, what else do we have? We had uh, Alberto Del Rio taking on Daniel Bryan and Money in the Bank versus Money in the Bank winners um you know this was fine but it was not long enough it was um you know this was really short for what it should have been i think and i'm continually confused by why we have raw guys coming over to smackdown all the time this happened what three or four weeks in a row now you've had truth or morrison or now del rio coming over to smackdown I mean, the roster really that thin? I guess it is, especially because they just fired a bunch of people. Um, but, you know, it's like... And I can see why they gave Del Rio a clean win over Brian, because Del Rio was just coming up losing cleanly to Punk on Raw, and that's not good for him at all. Um, because he's the guy supposed to be challenging for the title soon. He's got the money in the bank, and he got his ass kicked by one of the champions. So, you know, I see why they gave him the, the win over Brian, but, uh, you know, honestly, the match wasn't nearly long as long as it should have been. I, there are things you could have cut out of this show to get, and given that match more time. I think they should have. If they're going to use a Raw guy, at least use the Raw guy. Um, and Wade Barrett came out and I hit uh, Daniel Bryan, beat up Bryan with a kick, and then hit him with, uh, as The Rock, to, to paraphrase The Rock, the most idiotic move in sports entertainment. Um, the, the Wasteland is stupid. He needs a new finish. I like Wade Barrett, but he needs a new finish badly. And, you know, I mean, obviously, it, it turns, they didn't announce this on the show, but as it turns out, Barrett and Bryan will have a match at SummerSlam, which raises the total match count up to five. Um, so I understand why Barrett wasn't facing Brian this week, but, you know, there, I, you know, there are guys that you could have used in the Del Rio spot and maybe gotten Brian over, you know, but whatever. Um, Tyson Kidd had a match with Sin Cara, uh, the returning Sin Cara, who is not really Sin Cara, as in it is not Mystico, it is Hunico. A uh, FCW wrestler who was uh, putting on the mask so as to keep the Sin Cara buzz going while Mystico is suspended. Uh, it's, we're actually still not quite clear whether or not. Uh, I think the what I've heard is that the they want to bring is that they want to work um, this whole thing into an angle with maybe perhaps Mystico as Sin Cara feuding with Hunico after he comes back. Um, that would make sense in some ways, if only because the announced team was really being weird about this whole thing. You know, like, I, I would think that if you were 
trying to fool everybody into believing that Sin Cara was actually Sin Cara, you would not bring attention to the fact that he was heftier and heavier. Um, you would not bring attention to the fact that he has a different move set. And, you, yeah, you know, they they kept mentioning things and, and bringing up things that would suggest that it's not really Sin Cara. So if that's part of an angle, it makes sense. If not, I think it's kind of bad announcing. But frankly, the announcing was bad throughout the whole thing. Uh, this was another show where the announce team uh, came really close and in many ways did ruin a lot of things here. I mean, it, and even, even Matthews was horrible on this show. He was just awful, 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 awful. They were all awful. Michael Cole is really, really good at pushing storylines and pushing characters. Um, but his problem is that when he's in this mode of heel Cole pushing storylines and pushing characters, he's not calling matches. And, you know, as I said uh, in my Raw review, you know, J on Raw last week, you know, JR could do that for him. Um, but frankly, neither Matthews nor Booker T is capable of picking up that slack on SmackDown. Cole is supposed to be the guy in the announce team on SmackDown. And um, if he, you know, if he can't sell a storyline and call a match, then why is he the guy? And if he can't do, if the reason he can't do that is because of this heel persona he's doing, then cut it out, because he's not doing his job, um, in my opinion. We had, as additionally, we had uh, Mark Henry taking on Johnny Curtis in Johnny Cur Curtis's debut. Um, you know, uh, EJ has not yet, uh, uh, gotten back to me about the Mark Henry question, and I challenge him once again to, uh, because on, because, well, I'm not, not gonna, I'm not gonna say that the Mark Henry-Johnny Curtis match was anything but shit, because it wasn't. It was a glorified squash, and everything about it I saw coming, you know, and anyone could have seen coming a mile away, um, which was, you know, Henry beats the shit out of him, goes to do the leg breaking thing and then Seamus comes out to stop him which you know was pretty obvious that's what was going to happen and that's what did happen um I, I actually Seamus came out the one thing I will say is that Seamus came out kind of fast I expected him to Mark Henry to at least get his hands on the chair before Seamus ran into the ring um anyway so you know that was all kind of whatever but Henry had a promo beginning of the show with Curtis. Curtis was backstage and Henry came in and did really, really good job in this, in this promo with Curtis. He, you know, he basically said, you know, God, you know, he was very just like calm, collected, like, man, it sucks for you. You know, your career is beginning and ending on the same night. And Curtis goes, what? And Henry's like, oh, they didn't tell you? Your, your debut match is against me. And, you know, Curtis goes, oh, well, um, see, see you out there? <laughs> and Henry did some more stuff with him. Henry was, was really good in this promo. I, I, I think Mark Henry is in this place. Right now is a really good time for him, just because where he is in his career and where WWE is right now, Henry is one of the only guys, one of the only veteran company guys as in you know i mean henry's been around since attitude era um and he's never worked for anyone else so and he's he's really and, and everybody else who can kind of say that is retired i mean you know Triple H is the COO, and Michaels is retired, and Edge had to retire, and, you know, you know, or they're in other companies, you know what I mean? And it's like, Henry, you know, Taker's not around, and um, Henry, he's in the spot where he can get guys over, he knows what he's doing, he knows the system, and he's not being put into programs with people that he can't with people that make him look like a joke or make him look weak. He's, you know, he's not being put in a program with somebody like The Undertaker, you know. When he was feuding with The Undertaker, man, I hated that. I, you know, um, I, it, it didn't work for me because Henry came off as so inferior. It's like, it's, 
you know, The Undertaker is going to have a match at WrestleMania against fucking Mark Henry. Nobody cared. And it was like, nobody took him seriously. And this kind, and the place he's in now, the place the company is now, with the character they're giving him, I think he's got a real great opportunity to, to help guys get over and to use his knowledge and um, his ability to work this character. Because it's basically the same character he was doing during the Undertaker feud. But... You know, now he's doing it with Sheamus, and Sheamus is a guy that you can see Mark Henry beating the crap out of. Frankly, you know, I can see it. You know, is the match at SummerSlam going to be very good? You know, no. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. There, a match between Sheamus and Mark Henry at SummerSlam is going to suck. Um, you know, if Triple H can't pull a good match out of Sheamus, there's no way in hell that Henry can. But, um. That having been said, it's uh, it's it's good. It's I have no problem with what they're doing with the character right now, and it's, and hopefully Sheamus will go over, and that will help him because they've done a really good job portraying Henry as this kind of, you know, career killing monster. And I also thought it was funny that they they pushed him breaking Kozlov's leg when just on Monday, uh, CM Punk mentioned Kozlov being fired. That was pretty funny. Um. So yeah, I, uh, that was that was pretty much it for for SmackDown. You know, we had um, you know there were still they, they they ran down the the SummerSlam card with the four matches and uh, you know five matches now they didn't mention those and that they played the CM Punk uh, Cena feud kind of NFL film film style uh, video package that they had on Raw that was pretty cool, um, and. Yeah, I mean, frankly, you know, it wasn't that great of a show. It was okay. It was, as far as making you want to buy SummerSlam, I mean, I, I think they're counting, and rightly so, that Punk scene is going to make you want to buy SummerSlam. But, you know, there's only four, five matches on the card, one of them that wasn't even announced on television, and that's because, you know, SummerSlam is Punk Cena. That's what it is. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Christian Norton, and, you know, I'm glad we have a couple of announced undercard matches, but really, it's Punk Cena. So, and they know that. And I've, I've heard some talk that, you know, the matches are going to be longer, hopefully they'll give Punk Cena some time. But, um, you know, as, as far as, you know, making people care about about the SmackDown side of SummerSlam, you know, they, they did, the, the SmackDown storylines are Sheamus and Henry and, uh, and Orton and Christian, and they put those storylines over fine. Um, you know, overall the show wasn't great, but it also didn't stink up the place. It was just, like I said at the beginning, kind of meh. It was alright. So, yeah. I can't really think of anything else I wanted to say, aside from the fact that, uh, you know, Zack Ryder was barely on this week, and uh, Oksana looks good with black hair. Uh, but, you know, frankly, that's... That's really about it. So, um, yeah, we'll see how SummerSlam goes. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm sure I'll be doing a video on it. So uh, we will catch you then.